on episode 339 of Nintendo Switchcraft, we need to unpack the Mario Maker 2 Direct. I've got some questions for you. Capcom has a sale. Those stories and more on this episode of Nintendo Switchcraft. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody. This is Switchcraft. It's brought to you live three times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern and on Saturday, whenever I can get around to it. Tune in live over at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. And if you want to get episodes of other shows just like this ad-free for as little as a dollar, head on over to patreon.com slash runjumpstomp. This episode is brought to you by patron Charles B., Thank you very much, Charles. Let's jump right in to the show. Now you can play Donkey Kong on your ColecoVision, Atari VCS, or in television video game system. Donkey Kong has multiple screens, just like the arcade game. All right. Well, man, talk about multiple screens. We have got some unpacking to do. Super Mario Maker 2 had a Nintendo Direct yesterday, and I got to tell you, I think it. I think Nintendo knocked it out of the park with this one. They did a great job selling me on Super Mario Maker 2. Now, I am somebody who have who owns Super Mario Maker 1. So, I have a, the Wii U is sitting right over next to my PS4 on my desk here, and if I want to play uh Super Mario Maker 1, I can play it whenever I want and I can can basically have infinite Mario already. So, they had to do a pretty good job to sell me on this and they did let's do a recap of the announcements that they made so uh first off i'm not going to go over what mario maker is everybody already knows what it is you make mario levels and uh we get to play them okay let's talk about what's new there uh there's a lot of new stuff that's included and i'm probably not going to hit anything uh first off uh that we've got slopes this is a big thing that people were were asking for <clears throat> excuse me in the first one was slopes as like uh, an update uh so if you don't know in super mario brothers 3 i think that was the first one to have it uh you could have a sloped hill instead of a a stepped hill and mario could squat on that hill and he would slide down on his on his butt and any um any enemies that he ran into while he was sliding he would knock down which was a really fun, like it was very satisfying to do that, especially if you hit it from, like you you jumped over a hill and you landed and then immediately squatted down. You could slide down, uh, take out a bunch of enemies, and then if, if it came right back up on the other side, you would slide back up and you'd have all that momentum and you'd go pretty, you, you would, it would be really fun. Uh, so I'm very, very excited that slopes are in the game. It means that people can do a lot of really cool things with the physics of the game. And not only that, but they also have multi-angles for the slopes. So uh, you can have steep ones and gentle ones. And I think that it's it, it opens up a lot of possibilities. Uh, they brought back the angry sun from Super Mario Brothers 3. It was basically the sun is up in the sky and it's angry and it chases Mario down and tries to hurt him which can also be switched over to a moon, and we'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, they are adding on-off switches, so you can hit it, like if you hit the on switch, it switches everything over to red, and then if you hit it again, it switches everything over to blue. So you can have like red transparent blocks, and then when you hit them, they fill in. I think that that's pretty cool. You can change where the level of the water is on the level. So instead of just having an entire level that's underwater, you can also have a level that's half underwater or a, a level where the level of the water continues to change throughout the the game, which I think is really good. They're adding in Bonsai Bill, which chases you down instead of just going in a straight direction. Um, they, 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 this one I'm, done, I'm not really excited for. They have co-op. Uh, building. So as you are making a course, you and another player can work together to make a course. I feel like that's just going to get confusing and people will, will like be, it's, it won't be as fun as making something on your own 
you know, unless you could, you know, save a course, send it to somebody, they could update it, send it back to you, and you could keep ping-ponging back and forth. But two people, uh, each with a Joy-Con, working on a, a level at the same time, it doesn't seem fun to me. That seems like it would just be frustrating. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in. They, okay, this was, this was a big deal. All right, they added in a story mode that has over 100 levels in it. 100 levels, okay? That is basically a full Mario game. If you got if you got a, Mar a 2D Mario game and it had 100 levels in it, you'd probably be pretty happy. At least I would. And uh, Super Mario Maker comes with 100 levels. Excuse me, I had to cough. 100 levels that are made by Nintendo's level designers. And we all know that Nintendo has fantastic level designers. So these are going to be really, really good levels. I'm very excited to be playing those uh, through the story mode. There's like an overworld, it seems like. And, you know, in the first Mario Maker, they they had, I don't want to say a story mode, but they had uh, single-player stuff that you could go through to unlock... Like, you could go through and finish a level, and that would unlock, like, the spring... Uh, to use when you start building levels, which which I thought that was kind of cool. Um, as you go through the story mode, I think you get coins, and then you can use the coins to buy the things that you're going to uh, use. Um, they have new course themes, which I was really excited about, because, you know, as much as I think the Mario games are fantastic, um, they, they all kind of look samesies, the 2D Mario games. They all kind of look the same after a while, and they kind of blend together. So they added in new course themes like uh, desert and snow and forest and sky themes. I think the forest is probably the one that I'm least excited about. But the desert one, I think, looks really, really fantastic. Um, and what's even better, I noticed like when I was watching it, and if, if you want to see my live reaction, go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash run, jump, stomp. I, I did a live reaction to uh, the direct, but I even commented, I was like, oh man, the music on these themes is really, really good. And then they unveiled that it is, it is of course done by the legendary Koji Kondo. Uh, he's a fantastic uh, music composer, and he's been working on Super Mario stuff since forever. So I'm very excited that Koji Kondo is a part of this. Um, then they, you can change styles. Okay, uh, right now we have Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers three, uh, new Super Mario Brothers. I think, I think that's it, and then. They have one, and basically when you play those three and you, you make a, a level, you can kind of toggle between them and just it just changes the look. But then they added in Super Mario uh, 3D World as a... Excuse me, I had to cough again, I'm sorry. Um, as a... Uh, what? How did they phrase it? I think they called it a theme... Uh, no, they called it a style. Uh, and this includes new things that don't work in the other um, uh, in the other modes or in the other styles. So things like Cat Mario or the Clear Pipe or the Koopa Troopa Car or the, the Track Block, which it follows the, pl the path that the player draws, um, or the Piranha Creeper, which is basically this big piranha plant that will... Uh, reach out and change direction uh, based on how you draw it when you make it, uh, and then it'll go back, and then it comes back in and, and goes back and forth over and over. And the thing that I'm most excited about for this is on the top, they show the the three styles, Mario, Mario 3, uh, Super Mario... Oh, yeah, there, there's four styles. Uh, Mario Original, Mario 3, Super Mario uh, World style like the from the super nintendo and then new super mario brothers and then there's a line because those four are all compatible with each other i guess and then on the bottom there was another one and it's funny because they said other styles plural they said other styles in plural and then they only listed one and it was the new uh, super mario 3d world so my wish my dream of having 
Super Mario Brothers 2 style added into this, this is a possibility. I would also like to see, this is something that uh, I, I saw somebody on Twitter post about. I would also like to see uh, Super Mario Land style that's based off the Game Boy. I think that would be really cool. And if you have other ideas for other styles that you want to see, I would love to hear it. Paper Mario would be really cool. I think that would be fantastic. Um, but I I'm very excited for the idea of these other styles. And are they going to be DLC? Are they going to be paid DLC? Or is this going to be something that just gets announced and uh, uh, shows up later? I don't know. I think paid DLC makes sense. And I'm okay with it. I'm very much okay with it. Uh, they also showed us Course World, which we had in the last one, but this time it is searchable. So you can you can put in like uh, you can tag your levels. So if you make a a, a level that has auto scrolling, you can tag your level as auto scrolling. And if I want to play an auto scrolling level, I can search for that and filter my wh whatever is I'm looking for by the tags that are available. And I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of, of tags available. I'm sure that they're going to have auto play levels because Super Mario uh, Maker 1 had a lot of uh, auto play levels where all you had to do is kind of hold forward and B and the game would play itself and would play music and stuff, which was very cool. I love that players were able to make it, but now I'm happy I'll be able to filter it out. So if that's not what I'm looking for, it'll be easier for me to find the type of content that I really like. Uh, they, they said that in, in course world, uh, players can play courses with people all over the world. When playing with four players, you can play as Mario, Luigi, Toad, or Toadette. And there's a couple different ways that you can play. You can, you can play multiplayer versus where four players are trying to, race to the end and the first person that gets there wins which is kind of cool then there's multiplayer co-op where whoever gets it doesn't matter who gets to the end as long as somebody gets to the end everybody wins which i think is very very cool and they have nearby play where up to four players each of whom is on a nintendo switch so you got four people all with their own switch you can all play together um, in, in probably the multiplayer versus or the multiplayer co-op. Now, there's a lot of people who heard that and they got angry. They were like, wait a second. I want to be able to play on one Switch by handing a controller. And I'm, I want to talk about why that doesn't make sense. Okay? I want to talk why that doesn't make sense. And yes, I know that you can do it on the new Super Mario Brothers games. But it makes a lot more sense to me for the game, for each character to be able to scroll independently. And when it's multiple people all playing on the same system, we're all locked into that same scroll, probably locked around player one. And that is a lot less fun to me. Should it be an option? Probably. I think that it should be an option. But... I am perfect for myself. I am perfectly okay uh, doing multiple switches for that particular mode, if that makes sense. Uh, it definitely wouldn't make sense for a race. You know what I mean? Because if somebody gets left, left behind, like the person in last place is constantly just getting cut off. What are the, how does that work for a race? I'm not sure. And I think that Nintendo just decided that multiplayer versus and co-op rather than delineate between those two, they just kind of lump them in together. Now, a question that I've seen people ask about the play together mode, uh, it says here in course world, players can play courses with people all over the world. It doesn't say with your friends. Now I would have to think, I would have to think that Nintendo would allow us to invite our friends to this. You'd think that that would be something that they do. But the past being precedent, Nintendo has shown us time and time again that they don't understand online play. It just, it seems to be beyond them. They can't quite 
grasp it or understand it. And, you know, Nintendo's been doing a lot of changes lately. So maybe it's the new Nintendo and maybe they're going to do things the right way. But they didn't specifically say, play with your friends. And that makes me very, very, very nervous about this play together mode. Because if it's just against random people, I am not interested. I don't want to race against random people. That's not going to be fun for me. I want to race against my friends. I want to race in the community, in the run, jump, stomp, nerd nest community. That's the people that I want to race with. I want to race with them. I don't want to, I'm not interested in racing with randos. Racing with randos is my new podcast that you guys can check out. It comes out on Mondays. Not really. I'm just kidding. Um, but racing with randos is not something I'm interested in. I don't want to do that. Okay. So, um, I think I covered all of the stuff, uh, about the game. TF Wagner in chat is pointing out something very, very good. He, he mentioned split screen. That's a very good point. Uh, you could play this split screen. I, I hate playing games split screen. It's terrible. So put in split screen Nintendo for the people who like it. Give them the option. If that means that we have to wait a long, little longer, then I'm okay with it. But I don't care if we ever get split screen on it. I'm, I would just rather play online where I have my own screen and I don't have to share. Uh, Bill doesn't like sharing, apparently. Sorry, I had to cough yet again. Okay, um, they, they finished up with a couple of really, really good deals, okay? Uh, they, they finished up with a couple of really great deals. The first one uh, was Nintendo Switch. I'm sorry. Well, I got, okay, I'll go with the second one because I already started saying it. Nintendo Switch Game Vouchers. So let me read this to you guys. It says, for $99.99, fans with a paid Nintendo Switch online membership can purchase a set of two Nintendo Switch Game Vouchers from the Nintendo eShop. Okay, I'm going to stop there and make sure that I put an exclamation point on that paid part, okay? The reason is because earlier this year, a month ago, maybe, I'm not sure exactly when, uh, I, I believe about a month ago, Nintendo partnered with Twitch. And they partnered with Twitch to give away a month, I think it was a month or maybe it was three months, I can't remember, um, I see, there you go. I, it, Bill's brain. I got Bill brain going on. Um, they, it's a, a set amount of time. It doesn't matter how long a set amount of time for, um, Nintendo switch online. So you could get it for free if you are a Twitch prime subscriber. And a lot of people are Twitch prime subscribers. Why are they Twitch prime subscribers? Well, because they subscribe to Amazon prime so they can get stuff delivered to them. And then it's free to just link your account to your Twitch account and then get free stuff on Twitch too. In fact, if you do that, you can subscribe to this channel right here, Run, Jump, Stomp on Twitch and support the show um, or any other streamer that you want to support. Now, if you used your Twitch Prime to get the free Nintendo Switch online, I don't think that this game voucher is available to you. I think that's a very important thing. Plus a quick PSA from Smash Block in chat. He says, don't forget to claim your second half of the Twitch Nintendo Switch Online offer from Twitch Prime. The second half gives you nine months. So you're basically getting uh, nine months for, it's a good deal, all right? And I talked about it before. You can go back and check it out. I don't have the details in front of me. I can't remember them because I'm an old man and, and I can't remember things. Um, but if you got your your Nintendo Switch Online from that, I don't think that you're going to be able to capitalize on these vouchers. Let me talk about the vouchers. What do these $99.99 uh, vouchers do? Well, for the cool price of $100, uh, you get these two vouchers and they are... Where I lost my place. Um, with these vouchers, you can buy, um, redeem these vouchers for two eligible 
eligible, that means it's limited, uh, for two eligible digital games on the Nintendo eShop. For example, players can pre-purchase Super Mario Maker 2 and also grab another fun game like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, uh, Super Mario Odyssey, Yoshi's Crafted World, Breath of the Wild, uh, to play while you're waiting for Mario Maker 2 to come out. Okay. If you do this, and I understand that there are some people who are unhappy about this, and, and if you're listening to this, you might be like, wait a second, how does this work? All right, so I buy, I buy a vouchers, the two vouchers for $100, right? That's 50 vouchers a piece, or 50, $50 a piece. And then I buy a $60 game for it. I'm saving $10 per game. So I'm basically saving $20 by doing this. Seems like a no-brainer. Unless you live in a country other than the United States. And here's why. Uh, in places like England, the price of the eShop games, I think, is like 60 pounds. And 60 pounds is more than $60. So if you buy this for the $100 or whatever, you may actually end up spending more than you would if you just bought the games physically because typically uh, overseas, you can get the games cheaper. This is what somebody who lives in England told me today. Uh, typically, they can buy games on Amazon or, or go to game or whatever and get the games for much cheaper physically than they can digitally. Here in the U.S., that's really not quite the 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 same so uh when i buy a game physically in the store it generally costs me sixty dollars and it costs me sixty dollars on the eShop. so buying this makes a lot of sense for me now that being said for the people who are like okay well this sounds like a great deal i'm gonna buy it what games are eligible there's a whole bunch of games that are eligible and I just accidentally closed the list of the games that are, oh, where in the hell is it? I can't find, I just closed it by like like some kind of idiot. See, uh, here we go, I found it. All right, so here's the list of eligible games. All right, the games that are available to buy with the game voucher. You can buy Super Mario Maker 2, Zelda, 1-2 Switch, why you would waste it on 1-2 Switch when that costs $49, I don't understand. Uh, but there you go. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Arms, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. As I go through this list, I start seeing, okay, I already have most of these games. Why would I Why would I bother with the vouchers? Well, just keep waiting. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Splatoon 2, Super Mario Odyssey, Bayonetta 2, Digital Version, Sushi Striker, The Way of the Sushido, um, Kirby Star Allies, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Mario Tennis Aces, Pokemon, uh, Let's Go, Super Mario Party, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Fire Emblem Warriors, Super uh, Mario Brothers U Deluxe, uh, Yoshi's Crafted World, Hyrule Warriors, Dragon Quest Builders, Pokémon Tournament, Fitness Boxing, Octopath Traveler, Go Vacation, and The World Ends With You Final Remix. Um, but there's also games... And, oh my gosh, where did it go? I read it earlier. There, there are games that are not out yet that are going to be eligible for you to buy with these. And I don't remember what the games are and, and it's not in front of me anymore. Um, dang it. That's okay. I'll, I'll be sure to put a link in the show notes to this so you can find out more. Or if somebody in chat uh, remembers, they can tell me. Uh, that's, that's, you know, chat is awesome like that. They remember things because Bill can't remember things. All right. So the vouchers thing, I think, is a pretty good deal, and I'll, I will probably uh, be picking that up. Uh, just got to clear it with my wife first. The other deal that comes along with Super Mario Maker 2, oh my god, 28 minutes, jeez. Um, the other deal that comes along with Super Mario Maker 2 is you can get a Nintendo Switch Online bottle, bu bottle? bundle. It says launching in stores and digitally on the Nintendo eShop on June 28th, in addition to the standalone game, this bundle includes the Super Mario Maker 2 game and 12-month individual membership for Nintendo Switch Online. This has a suggested retail price of $70, and you save $10. Seems like a pretty good deal. Honestly, 
if you are on the fence about Nintendo Switch Online and you end up buying, if, if the bundle or if the vouchers sound like a good deal to you, then they pay for themselves. Uh, Nintendo Switch Online pays for itself by buying these vouchers. I mean, that seems like a great deal to me. Uh, Pakio in chat. I knew chat would have my back. Thank you, Pakio. He says, uh, the games that will be also eligible that are not out yet are Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, Fire Emblem Three Houses, and Astral Chain. Um, so, so there you go. Uh, I talked about Super Mario Maker 2 a lot. Holy cow. But if you would think I'd be done, but I'm not. Because I have two tweets that I tweeted. And I want to talk about the results of those two tweets. So right after the uh, the Direct, I sent out a tweet. I said, okay, we've seen the Mario Maker 2 Direct. What are you most excited for? What are you most disappointed about? Let me know, and I'll read your response on the show. Don't forget to vote in the poll. So before we get there, for me, I thought that the whole thing was awesome, which is great. I was, however, very disappointed that they didn't say a peep about Amiibo support. So I don't know if the game is going to support Amiibo at all. And I find that to be disappointing. All right, here are some of the uh, replies. Uh, Matt Squatch says... I like that name. Uh, they said, I used to think there was zero chance of Mario Brothers 2 being uh, a type in the game just because it's so different. But with the fact that 3D World is not compatible with the other types makes me now think it is inevitable. I don't think it's inevitable, but it would be awesome, and I, I can't wait for it. Uh, Johnny LaDuke says, uh, very excited about the multiplayer aspect. I'm hoping we can play with friends online. It seems like you you could only play with friends locally and randoms online, but hopefully I'm wrong. I kind of already addressed that. It's a bug hunt man says excited. People can tag levels so I can finally filter out autoplay levels. Uh, Angie says story mode looks great. However, I wish they talked or showed us more about how the game worked in docked and handheld mode. Um, Adam says it was, I was excited for the game before the direct. Now I can't wait. Uh, Mojo says co-op and versus play look awesome. Joe says the, the game looks great and it has a lot of improvements from the original. I'm a bit shocked that they didn't talk about Amiibo support. I'm also a bit confused about whether or not the special edition will be available in the U.S. at all. He's referring to a special edition that was unveiled over in Europe that comes with like a little uh, thing that you can write, like a notepad or something, and it comes with a, uh, a stylus that looks like, um, what does it look like? It looks like a, con a contractor's pencil, a flat contractor's pencil. I've talked about it on the show before. J Harley 17 says the game looks awesome. Didn't play the first one, so I can't wait to get my hands on this. Disappointed that this showed me how little time they spent on Mario Party. Hopefully there's a big update on that soon. All right, so thank you guys for replying to that. The, the poll is still going. Uh, by the way, it was 93% um, of people who responded said it was awesome, and 7% said that they were sad. Oh, poor people. And then I asked, are you going to buy the vouchers for Nintendo Switch on blind? Reply with your reasons. I'll read them on the show. Uh, there's three days left on this poll, so if you go, if you follow me on Twitter at RunJumpStomp, you can participate in the poll uh, 35% of people who replied said yes, and I, I posted this just before uh, I started the show. So not a lot of people have voted yet, but only 35% of people said yes, 65% said no. Uh, Webhead said, just give me a $20 credit for any eShop game I want. Yeah, I can see that, but then they're not getting anything. Uh, so I, I, I can understand why they're doing it the way that they're doing. It's got to be a good deal for both of them. Uh, for both you and for Nintendo. Uh, uh, at Ranger Rainer says, my answer is no, because I still buy physical thing, physical games when available. It is a great deal though. Seth S. Scott, who I have actually had on the show before, he's a, he is a, he made the game Membrane, a uh, really, really cool game. I think him and his wife worked on it. Uh, you should make sure you, if you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash runjumpstomp, you can search for membrane and you can see this really weird game that he made uh he said unless there were two new games coming out i wanted no reason if they announce animal crossing or something that i knew i was going to get 
as well as Super Mario Maker 2, then maybe. Hyrulean Julian said, I'm going to buy Mario Maker, Fire Emblem, and Marvel Ultimate Alliance anyway. So I may as well save $10 on each by spending the cash up front. Although I think uh, for some paying up a hundred up front is a lot to ask. And that is, that is something to keep in mind. That's a hundred dollars you got to part with all at once, as opposed to spreading that out over a longer period of time. Sorry, I had to cough. I've been talking a lot. Uh, then they said, I'll also assume I get to use one later this year on Link's Awakening, Animal Crossing, or Pokemon. I wouldn't assume that. Um, I wouldn't assume that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Captain Logan says, I think I will try one since getting Nintendo first party games at launch with a discount is tough. I will probably pick up Mario Maker 2 bundle with the Switch Online though. Then I'll have three years of online for $35. First year I paid for second through Twitch Prime, third through Mario Maker 2. That seems like we're getting pretty good deals on Nintendo Switch Online. So people like myself who complain about what we're paying for, maybe it doesn't hold up. Oh my God, I've been talking for a really long time. I'm going to take a quick break so you can hear from our sponsors. Reach from his Pac-Man. Oh my goodness, Capcom has a sale going on right now. A uh, bunch of games that are on sale. I'm going to tell you all about them. We've got Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. That is 50% off. It's $30. It's a great game. If you like Monster Hunter games, you probably already have it. If you've never played a Monster Hunter game, uh, I hate to say check out the demo because the demo is terrible. But the game is really fun. Uh, just make sure you join our Discord uh, runjumpstomp.com slash discord. And if you have questions about Monster Hunter, there are people in there who can answer those questions for you. So if you end up picking up the game and you're confused and you will be confused if it's your first Monster Hunter, then join our discord and ask questions and people will help you out because we got awesome, really smart people there who know a lot about that game. Uh, Okami HD is 25% off for $14.99. That is I guess um, the first version of Zelda with a wolf, people who've played it know what I'm talking about. People like me who haven't don't know what people mean when they say that, but that's what I've heard. And I've heard very, very good things about it. Mega Man 11 is 20% off for, for 20, $24. Uh, Mega Man Legacy Collection is 34% off. That's such a weird uh, number uh, for, for 10 bucks, basically. Mega Man Legacy 2 is 10 bucks. That's 50% off. Mega Man X Legacy Collection is 25% off for $15. Uh, Legacy Collection 2 for Mega Man X is the same price. Resident Evil Revelations is 30% off for $14. And Revelations 2 is 30% off for the same price. You can get the Capcom Beat 'em Up bundle for $12. That's 40% off. And Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, which includes all of the Street Fighters, I think up to four or something. I don't know. I stopped playing Street Fighter a million years ago, but uh, that is $26 for 35% off. These seem like some really good deals. So if, you're, if you've been holding out on playing some Capcom stuff, now seems like the time to get in there. If I had to pick one game, well, I don't have any of these except for Monster Hunter. So that's tough to recommend uh, because I haven't played these other ones, but... If, like, of the ones that I don't have, the one that's probably calling to me the most is probably Resident Evil Revelations because I'm, I would like to play a good scary game. And with summer coming up, I would have time to stream it. So maybe, maybe that'll happen. Although Resident Evil 2 on PS4, I kind of want to play that too. Plus it'll look prettier. Uh, I know, it's a Nintendo show. I shouldn't talk about that. Big Fall, a jungle adventure game designed by David Crane from Activision. Okay, uh, Mr. Um, oh gosh, what's his name? I forgot it. Hideki Kaima uh, said that we're going to get some Bayonetta 3 gameplay showcase uh, within the next week. Uh, I, I don't know... When that's happening, I clicked on the wrong, I clicked on the wrong tweet and now I can't, dang it, sorry about this. Um, there we go, translate tweet. Here It says, next week on the game site, uh, I'm not going to bother, 
I'm oh no, that's the retweet. Okay. So next week on Bayonetta 3's website, we're going to get some gameplay footage of Bayonetta 3. And that's coming from uh Hideki Kamiya uh himself. Sorry if I've butchered your name, sir. Uh I don't play Bayonetta 3 and I'm not familiar with his work personally, but I know there's a lot of people out there that are excited about it, so I figured I would let people know. Uh, let's let's uh, let's wrap the show up because we're going pretty long. Let's uh, get some feedback from Drew. Uh, I got an email from Drew. Drew says, "Hi, Bill. I live near New York City, so I go to N- Nintendo New York quite frequently." Uh, listen, Drew, I'm very jealous. I've never been there. My wife has been there. My niece has been there, but I've never been there, and that makes me very sad. So. Uh, maybe someday, someday I'll get a chance to go to New York City and stop by Nintendo New York. And if I do, I will let you guys know when I'm going and you can come by and high five me if you live in New York. All right. So he goes on to say, they used to have a nice amiibo display on the second floor. This seems to have been completely replaced by a cool statue of Link. I wish that he had included a picture because that would have been sweet. Uh, they also used to have quite a vast selection of Amiibo, but now it's just a small area of the store, a small display, and just three or four characters. This change happened around March. Thanks, Drew. Okay, so hmm. this makes me nervous. Are Amiibo going away? I know that as we get new Smash Brothers characters, we we will inevitably get Amiibo for them. However, when was the last time that a non-Smash Brothers character got a new Amiibo? I feel like... Excuse me. I'm sorry. I feel like it's been a while. And the idea... Like, the the timing of this email coming in and at the same time having... Uh, uh, having... Mario Maker 2 not mention Amiibo support at all... Oh, that makes me so, so nervous. Captain Logan in chat says, I think it would be worth having a Saturday Switchcraft live stream from the Nintendo store. Would they allow me to do that? I don't think so. If they would, I would do that. Um, That would be sweet. Uh, But I I doubt that they would do that. And I doubt that enough people would come out to make it worth worth doing. Uh, Plus, like, I don't, I'm not equipped for that. Like, I don't have the equipment to record in the field like that. I would have to buy some stuff. I don't know. It's definitely something to think about. Anyway, um, thank you for, for the email, Drew. I really appreciate it. Amiibo. I hope they don't go away. And not because I really care about their in- online functionality, like the stuff that happens in the game when you use them, because that doesn't really interest me all that much. What I hope doesn't go away is the cool figures that they make. And that's the reason I collect the ones that I collect. Notice I don't, I mean, if you're watching the show, you can see some of them on the shelf behind me. Uh, like I can see Waluigi right uh, right there and there's Wario and then there's the Mario one sitting on top of my Nintendo. But I don't collect all of the Amiibo. I just collect the ones that I think look cool or are of games that I really, really like. Like the ones that I have nostalgia for. Whoops, I dropped something. Like uh, like this Breath of the Wild, or not Breath of the Wild, this um, Twilight Princess uh, Wolf Link Amiibo. I think this thing looks awesome, so I've, I had to get it. Uh, you know what I mean? So I hope that the Amiibo don't go away. And I'm curious as to how many Amiibo you guys have. Like how many do you have? I'm going to count up how many I have. And I will tweet it out and you guys can reply to that tweet with how many you have. I guarantee most of you probably have more than I do. Uh, because I don't, I only, like I said, I only buy the ones that really appeal to me. I don't buy every single one. Um, wow, that, that ended really fast. That was weird. Uh, let's try another one. Have you played Atari today? I have not played Atari today, but I would like to. Uh, Become a part of the community. 
over at runjumpstomp.com slash discord. You can watch the show live over at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. Uh, make sure you head on over there. If you got Twitch Prime, subscribe. It, it really does help out. You can get a hold of me by sending a tweet at runjumpstomp. Use the hashtag Nintendo Switchcraft because I've got other shows that makes it easier for me to sort. If you want to check out my other shows, head on over to runjumpstomp.com slash shows. And if you want to support the show, go to runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. The music you are hearing right now is Corneria Star Fox Remix by Noteblock. It is awesome. Check out their stuff on YouTube. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.